Good evening, everybody. Come on, you've got to do much better than that. This is social enterprise day. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, first of my sincere apologies that I have to rush off, but um, taking on the, the title from the government with regards to social ambassadors, I've had to rush from Bournemouth yesterday, from Wales this morning, and I'm going to Royal Highway this evening, so my sincere apologies, but hopefully we're going to have time to have a little brief conversation um, and really tackle this issue of social enterprise, which I think is a fantastic arena to make some real, real fundamental changes. Um, my organisation is called the Bright Ideas Trust. I'll tell you a bit more about that, but I'll tell you why I actually went in, in and got involved in what has now been deemed social enterprise. I, um, for many who don't know, um, was the first man of the BBC show The Apprentice and went to work for Sir Alan Sugar for two years. Um, where you think I would learn all about commercial nature and it's only money, money, money. Far from it. Working with Sir Alan, who is one of the biggest philanthropists that you'll ever know, and he doesn't make a big noise about it, but he's fantastic in terms of he taught me the power of actually using business and the business imperative of getting things done in a quick and efficient manner and focusing that on social issues. My, my own personal journey in terms of being selected as an apprentice showed me that with the right kind of mentor, the right kind of support behind you, it's amazing the changes. I didn't need anybody to pat me on the head and say, you'll be a good boy. I needed somebody to open the door and say, this is how you do things, this is how you get on, and I'll run 100 miles as fast as everybody else to get there. Um, I was working, working with the organisation um, and working with Sir Alan and getting on reasonably well. I got my contract extended, etc. But I was fortunate enough to go to a conference. I went to a conference and I heard the Reverend Jesse Jackson speak. Phenomenal man, unbelievable, um, and he, he's regularly over the shores, so if you get to hear him speak, please go there um, and hear. But he said one of the most profound things I've ever heard in my life, and it was my light bulb moment, um, which is very reflective of my organisation in terms of what we use as our symbol. And he said, when, I'll get a bit biblical, so don't get scared, anybody, don't run in there. Um, he said, when the Lord sent the rains, he didn't say to Noah, you must, run, must look after yourself, you must swim faster, and you must do everything to make you stronger. What he said was to build something that's bigger than you are, that can look after many more people than you could ever imagine looking after yourself. And for me, that was like, wow. It was like, I had to sit up and I couldn't believe it. And I knew what I had to do. And it was my calling in terms of, I am quite religious, but I'm not going to preach, I promise. I said I wouldn't do that. But that was my calling in order to build the Bright Ideas Trust. Because I was getting lots of people, as my time through The Apprentice, who were saying, I want to start a business, I don't know where to go, what do I do? And I was trying to help them, and thank thankfully with the British Library, we had a number of one-to-one -one expert sessions which I held and specifically requested that young people got access to that. And I followed the great Anita Roderick, God, God rest her soul. Um, and it was a really revealing experience to see there was a hunger amongst these young people who wanted to start business but didn't know where to get access to information from real people who have actually been in business and got the T-shirt to prove it, and also get access to, to finance. No disrespect to our opening speakers, banks are sometimes not the best place and easiest place to go and get access to money because they're extremely risk-averse. And when you start saying social enterprise, they get a bit jittery and start breaking out in a cold sweat. So for me, it was, it was to find somewhere. He's gone now, so I'm allowed to get away with that. Um, I'm afraid not. I know, you're there. I love you anyway. I do love you. I do love you. Um, but what I was trying to do, what, what I found from that whole experience was that there was a gap. And this is, this is where I'll, I'll get back into business. And I found a gap where there was the banks at the bottom who were seen as the first, first port of call to go and get access to money. And you've got venture capitalists and business angels up here. And there seemed to be this massive gap in the middle where people could get access to small amounts of money to actually start out their businesses. And there was access to, to 5,000 odd from organisations like the Princess Trust who do fantastic, fantastic resources. But from my, resource, my research, once again at the British Library, having a look at the Global Enterprise Monitor Survey, it said, the recent one by Rebecca Harding, said that on average you need about £10,000 to start a business in the UK. So there's a big gap there for people who want to get off and get their ideas up and running. So I thought, what can I do about this? And I sat down, I contemplated, I prayed, I did, I did what I needed to do, and I came up with the idea that we could start an organisation that is going to give individuals access to funding up to £25,000, but above £5,000 to start off their business ideas, but also access to real-world business mentors. And by business mentors, I don't mean um, a golf manager, for my no disrespect, people who work in senior organisations and play lots of golf and do whatever, but somebody who has actually exited successfully from an entrepreneurial, small to medium-sized business, somebody who sacrificed their own finances, woke up in a cold sweat because they don't know where the money's going, and actually come out on the other side. I'm in the cold sweat moment with my own business, so I understand part of that. And it's very scary when you risk your own capital. Um, but it's a good lesson. You've got to do it. Um, 
and also advisors from the four cornerstones of business, which I think are important. And that's accountancy, legal, banking support, so I'm getting back on side now, and also uh, man um, management consultants. I didn't swear, I did say management consultants. Um, because I think those four areas are very, very important to give people support. So what I've done with the Bright Ideas Trust is we've given a business support package which gives all of those elements to start up companies because I think that virtual team, the mentor and the advisor, plus the access to some sensible capital to actually give your business an idea and get it off the ground running is going to buck some of the trend with regards to the failure of some of, some of the startup company because I think lots of startup companies run off 100 miles an hour in one direction, realise maybe that's not the right way because they didn't have the advice, the guidance or didn't have the resources to start up properly and spend most of the time trying to rectify those issues and then by then it's too late. Um, what we're trying to do with regards to the Bright Ideas Trust is offer individuals that business support package in return for taking equity out of the companies. And this is where we're different from everybody else. We want to teach people entrepreneurial principles where we say we will give you something and we'll get something back because I feel that the problem with lots of social enterprises, they're focused within this tree-hugging, and don't throw anything at me, but it's, all, it's perceived as being within this tree-hugging charitable sector where it doesn't have any real business emphasis under, underpinning it. And if, I, if you're trying to get support from financial institutions, backers, etc., it's got to have a very good idea which has a social aspect, but also it's got to have a long-term business plan which says it's sustainable, which is going to last. And it's not a latchkey organisation that just basically spends half of its time looking for funding in the next year. It's actually trying to look for something in terms of longevity. So what I've tried to do with the Bright Ideas Trust is underpin it with a business plan which says we will take an equity stake out of the companies that we support, no more than 25%, but a significant amount in order to get a dividend back into the organisation and to encourage the individual to work hard to buy back their stake out of the organisation, which they can do at any time. So we're teaching them how the real world works. And I've also put, packaged that under a charity. I've got our registered charity number now. That was extremely difficult. Um, the Charity Commission were really helpful in what we do, but they didn't quite understand what I was trying to do with regards to investment. And it scared them ever so slightly. But I put it under a charitable branch with a CIC, a kick, as it's called. I don't know. My grammar teacher will go mad if you heard me saying that. But a kick underneath it, which is the trading arm of the organisation, which does all the management of the, 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 the beneficiaries that we support. So I've got a charity which is deemed a social enterprise, but I'm trying to teach people about young people between 18 and 30 who are termed as neats. I don't like that, say I hate it. It makes them sound like they've got nits or something. Um, but to focus on that particular demographic and get them engaged with business, because I think that's the way that we're going to make a social change and encourage more people, rather than pontificating about turning off MTV base and getting them back because I listened to MTV Base and it didn't do me, well, it might have done me some harm, but there you go, it doesn't matter. So that basically, in a nutshell, is the Bright Ideas Trust. I think we have a potential, all of us within this social entrepreneur sector, to have some real social impact on people who need our assistance. But unless we have a business imperative, and that's why I think social enterprise and enterprise is the focus here, if we have that focus on business, then we can really make long-term changes as opposed to being supported by um, government quangos and government funding, which comes with so many strings attached sometimes, that it nullifies the impact that you can actually have. So that's my overview of the Bright Ideas Trust. Thank you very much for listening. Hopefully you've got some questions.